You and I, over the last week, have had the opportunity to uh, both jump over to Phoenix, Arizona, uh, to see Honeywell's uh, new opened innovation center. I don't know the exact terms. I don't think there's been an official naming, but it's an <clears throat> innovation center, executive briefing center, uh, focused on advanced and urban aerial mobility technologies. And so, Pat, you know, first thing first, when I got there, you know, I kind of said to myself, like, I'm not really a drone guy. You know, yeah. this isn't really my thing. Not sure. You know, we do a lot of work with Honeywell. Uh, we've worked closely on the quantum business. That's now Quantinium. We work closely on the HCE business, Forge, IoT, uh, Edge, and technologies and data. But the, the, the aerospace stuff, it's like, I don't know. But let me tell you something. You know, as I spent a little bit more time there, beyond having the opportunity to sit in the cockpit of some of these simulators flying, uh, future, uh, you know, mobility, aerial mobility devices. And I'm not talking drones. I'm talking about flying planes and helicopters. Um, you know, I sat down and I started to be able to make some parallels that were really important. So, you know, Honeywell itself, I think, is almost the side topic of this. It's the fact that Honeywell is building technology that's in the guts of almost every um, flying object in the world. Things like, you know, avionics things like the ability to detect and have auto autonomous flight uh, to miss a, a potential crash. I mean, the technology that's being built at Honeywell is really important. And so what I started to really make a parallel of though, is that the aerial mobility story and the, the ground mobility story, this thing that we're talking about all the time with autonomous vehicles, with uh, robo taxis, there's a huge opportunity in the sky. And so if you think about the challenges that lie ahead for mobility, um, you know, on the ground, we're talking about urban mobility. We're talking about things like Move It, and we're talking about Waymo and we're talking about Uber. And right now, by the way, the solution, the policy, the ability to re-engineer cities to create a space for cars to move freely um, so that autonomy can full, happen in, in full, safe, meaningful, productive ways is really hard. Guess where it's not going to be as hard is actually in the air. Why? Mm -hmm. Well, traffic in the air is more simple um, and it's 3D and the grid is and there's less of it. And so you've got some different you know, things in play, but um, you've got a $200 billion addressable market for a company like Honeywell. You've got the opportunity to um, focus on taxi, focus on middle mile, focus on um, kind of last mile. Um, that creates a huge amount of TAM for the company. And you've got this chance, Pat, and all I can think about is every time I land at JFK Airport, I'm 11 miles away from the city of Manhattan, and it takes me two hours to get there. And think about how on a scale from the uh, most, you know, I guess you'd say affluent people all the way down to more of a socioeconomic or an economic creator that you could take that kind of technology and expand urban footprints, make housing more affordable, get people from point A to point B more seamlessly and do it using, you know, air transfer, regional mobility, uh, super commuting, which are all things that, that Honeywell is focused on in this advanced aerial mobility uh, center and the, this particular business. They're also focused on making it safer, tying avionics to technologies we understand. I'm going to pause because I could go on and on. But the tech itself is interesting. The economics, though, Pat, are what interests me the most. Just imagine if you could live an hour or two outside of a city, get there in a 10-minute aerial ride, maybe subsidized by the government, bring more talent in, you know, because in this next wave of hybrid work, it's not going to be all work at home. We're going to have to find a way to get people in and out of urban centers, keep economic productivity high, and do it safely, and it's not all going to be autonomous uh, transportation on the ground. No, it's great analysis. And, and the first thing that uh, I want to talk about is a little backdrop for this. So uh, Honeywell is very much a, a tech company. You know, Daniel, you and I have talked about uh, uh, HCE uh, and their data platform and the ability to essentially control buildings and factories with your smartphone. Uh, we've talked about quantum, right, with, with Quantinium. That's in the far right. Uh, but but the UAS UAM business is another one of these breakthrough innovations with a seven billion dollar pipeline over the next five years and a fifty four billion dollar pipeline out to 
2030. So this isn't playtime. This isn't research. This is this is real, uh, real commerce. And, uh, you know, it's funny. Sometimes when I go on trips, Daniel, I'm not too sure what I'm getting into. And and this was absolutely one of them. But I got to tell you, man, I I learned uh, I, I learned a lot. And first of all, people might say, duh, you know, the, the ability to have you know, an electric unmanned aerial vehicle uh, in some ways is a higher probability than an L5 car for all the reasons that that you talked about. So instead of having all of the cameras, instead of having uh, all of, you know, radar, LIDAR and a camera, uh, let me show you a picture of um, of the radar unit that, that by the way, you could put your hand uh, over it. This attaches to the bottom of, uh, of a drone, essentially giving you uh, the ability to not run into things, the ability to know when bad weather is ahead, and the ability to um, know where to land if you wanted to land on somebody's driveway. Now, anything beyond that, you would have to you would have to find uh, you'd have to fine tune this, but I thought, wow, radar is all that's required for some of these basic collision avoidance uh, 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 capability, and doing it at a mass uh, and doing it at, at, at a mass uh, scale. Uh, one of the other big things that I learned uh, was this is a flight computer, and I put the water bottle in front of it not because I like ugly pictures, but it just shows how small these are getting. So this would be the computer unit that would be inside one of these aerial electric drones. Uh, as comparison, uh, in a, in a um, large, let's call it a 777 class um, airplane, it would be the size of a bookshelf. And by the way, you would have uh, seven uh, of these. So miniaturization is big. Here's another thing I learned. GPUs aren't certified in the air <laughs> for uh, stuff like machine learning. So they, they do it on um, CPUs and they do it on, on GPUs. And one of the challenges that I learned is the auditability of, G, uh, of GPUs and the consistency uh, by, by which they operate. And then I was thinking, well, wait a second, L5 cars are pretty much based on all GPUs. How is it not good for the air, but it's it's okay for uh, the ground? One final thing I, I, I want to show you, and yes, I know, I like pictures. This uh, is essentially an engine. It's a joint venture between Denso and Honeywell. And if you know anything about Denso, they do a lot of the electric engines that uh, are, are out there. And picture... Uh, having multiple of these on a uh, on a uh, UAV, and that is that is the uh, that is why some of these numbers are are so high. So, you know, imagine uh, 215 horsepower, uh, and you have four to six of these when you're looking at one of these uh, uh, hauling vehicles. But all in all, it was a it was a fun tour. You know, it was only four hours long, but. I'd never seen anything like it. And as an analyst, you know, you like to see stuff you haven't seen before. Yeah, it was a, it was a super interesting, Pat. And thanks for filling in some gaps, talking about some of the specific technology that was developed. I do think uh, there's a very uh, thought-provoking conversation to be had about aerial mobility. Of course, it's going to be expensive. So figuring out subsidies to do it at scale is going to be a challenge. But uh you know, we got a lot of beautiful places that people could live if they didn't need to be so close to work, as we know, uh, if we could find ways to get people to and from. Uh, and of course, by the way, you could reduce some of this congestion on the ground by taking advantage of all that space in 3D. Uh, 